Hi folks, welcome to another Friday afternoon Facebook live stream for Ketamine Clinics of Los Angeles. Welcome to the Ketamine Advocates and the Ketamine Curious. I'm so glad to be here. I'm away this week, but I didn't want to miss chatting with you briefly. We're at Mammoth Mountain in California, and it's snowing. In fact, it's snowing amazingly. They have over 15 feet of snow. It's been remarkable. The skiing is great. I'm having a wonderful time. I did want to chat a little about ketamine, though. This is a remarkable thing, as you know. The latest wrinkle, now that ketamine is becoming accepted and people are realizing what it does for suicide and what it does for depression, is some of those detractors are saying, oh yeah, but it's addictive. You have to be careful. We need to study it more. Well, it doesn't need to be studied anymore. It isn't addictive. Now, those with semantic, those with semantic leanings are going to say, oh yeah, it is addictive. It isn't addictive any more than food is addictive. There are people who really have a problem with food, but it's so much a matter of set and setting. When I say set, I mean mindset. Ketamine given by doctors for therapeutic purposes is not addictive. It's way less addictive than opiates or than stimulants such as cocaine or amphetamines. There are a few areas of the world where people have gathered together to abuse ketamine. They are in a different set, mindset, and a different setting. They're doing this for a very different reason. They're using 10 to 100 times the amount that we give in the clinic. And they're doing it daily. This is not an addictive substance. I don't have anybody coming to my clinic because they crave ketamine. Nor do people enjoy the experience particularly. They enjoy and get enormous relief from the transformation that it instigates, that it stimulates, that it starts the, the process of putting into effect. Ketamine really prevents people from continuing to think about suicide. So think about that for a moment. People are giving you theoretical stuff about addiction. When we know practically people kill themselves without this treatment. Dr. Mendoff, for those who might be wondering about those who do abuse ketamine, what do you have to say to them when you, when you say theoretical and they say, yeah, well, there's people I know who, you know, perhaps are abusing it or who are addicted to it. What do you say to them? This is true. There are people who abuse ketamine. And there are people who are... I will not call it addicted because they don't develop tolerance. They don't develop uh, an inability to have a therapeutic effect. But they do crave it. They do seek it. They do distort their lives in pursuit of it. Well, that's a good distinction you just made about tolerance and about a physical dependence, which people don't really see with ketamine. Is that right? There is no such physical dependence with ketamine. It's not analogous to opiates, which do cause physical dependence. But opiates used therapeutically don't addict anyone. Opiates used therapeutically help people from suffering. Ketamine but, used therapeutically helps people from suffering. But the distinction being that people can become physically dependent upon opiates in a rather short period of time, even if they can be uh, benefiting from them, right? Is that correct? That's correct. Whereas and that's not be, the case with ketamine. It may even be necessary to increase their dose of opiate in order to get the desired therapeutic effect. This is not the case with ketamine. Ketamine does not produce any physical dependence. It doesn't produce tolerance. It doesn't require larger doses to achieve the same effect. Excellent. And then uh, what about the, the safety of it? For those who may be wondering or who may not have tuned into some of our previous Facebook Lives, which we do every Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, a little late today as we're having issues connecting on the mountain. You can see it's kind of stormy out here. You can see the snow and the wind, and it is cold. <laughs> it's cold. It's about 6 degrees Fahrenheit right now, and it's snowing. 
<laughs> I did not want to miss this occasion, so I'm here. But I got to tell you, it's going to be a short broadcast today. <laughs> uh, what were you asking? Oh, about safety. Yeah, safety of using ketamine in a clinical setting. This is absurd. This is people who are detractors. Ketamine is extraordinarily safe. There are no adverse long-term side effects. Ketamine has an enormously favorable risk profile. It is the most widely used anesthetic on earth. It is given tens or hundreds of millions of times every year in all kinds of contexts. It doesn't hurt people, given responsibly by physicians. Excellent, and it is really uh, stormy here. I want to give everyone a quick little 360 of uh, Mammoth here. It's looking very beautiful. Definitely a little stormy. The sun has gone away, though it was out for most of the day today. And the conditions sure have been pretty sweet. Anything else you want to say before we, we sign off for today, Dr. Mandel? I apologize for my lateness. We thought we had good receptivity on the mountain. And we, when we started to record, we, we just couldn't connect. Uh, but I'm really glad to be with you. I encourage you to write in or type in with your questions. And to look for us on Facebook and uh, on our website. What's your favorite run or some of your favorite runs? I love Climax. I love Dave's run. I love the backside, Red's Lake. But this is a mammoth mountain. There's something here for everyone. Awesome. Thank you very much, Dr. Mandel. Enjoy the rest of your time on the mountain and ski safe. Thank you all for joining me. I look forward to being with you again next Friday at 3 p.m. West to East Pacific time.